Want to change a young person's attitude and behavior? Here is an example of how to have a student change both attitude and behavior. will be describing is not a mock school counseling session but an actual individual counseling session when I took the role of a school counselor in a counseling session to demonstrate essential counseling skills. The school counselor observed how I implemented counseling theories and counseling techniques in practice with a middle school girl who was the school's most challenging student. The counselor sat in the session and observed how I used non-coercion and collaboration to prompt a change in the student's attitude and behavior. I started the meeting by asking the student what was the situation that brought her to the office. Alicia, not a real name, replied that she had called someone a bad name. I mentioned that it seemed to me that her impulse of being unkind to a fellow student controlled her behavior. I explained that if a person cannot control an impulse, then the person becomes a victim of the impulse. I asked her if she would like to be in control of her life rather than being a victim of her impulses. She answered in the affirmative. I then asked if she would be interested in learning how to control herself so she wouldn't repeat the same kind of behavior. She answered yes. I asked what options or choices she would have chosen or could have chosen when she had the urge to call another student a bad name. She said that, well, she could do nothing, say something nice, tap a toe, or draw something. After this discussion of possible choices, I asked her to send and take a deep gasp. I gave her an impulse card that looks like a traffic signal with three colored lights. I explained that the red refers to take a deep breath, a deep gasp of breath, in order to stop and take a moment to reflect. The yellow represents thinking about her possible options and then choose one as indicated by the green for go with your choice. I explained that the only way she could avoid being a victim of her thoughts or her feelings would be to, to redirect her thinking. After she practiced this procedure of gasping, thinking of options, then choosing one, Alicia asked if she could keep the little impulse card. It's my gift to you, I told her. By the way, I had previously visited a math class where Alicia was sitting in the back of the room drawing cartoons. Also, an administrator had told me that she had hacked into a computer account, which indicated to me she was quite academically very capable. I wanted to assess her reading, so I gave her something to read, which she read very well. I complimented her on her reading skill. Since the incident happened during her math class, I asked her if she, would, if she liked math. She said that she did not. She also mentioned that she did not like the advisory class that she had to attend because she preferred to be with her friends during this time. By the way, the advisory class is a flexible program taken by all students in the early part of the year, but devoted to remedial work with students as the year progresses. I then asked her what she would like, and of course she wanted to get out of the advisory class because she wanted to be with her friends. I asked her if this could be arranged, would she be willing to be tutored for two weeks in math? I also asked her if she would practice impulse control during these two weeks. She said that she would. I then asked her to again demonstrate how the impulse control procedure works. After she had practiced the procedure, I turned to the counselor and asked him if math tutoring could be arranged. He said that since he was in charge of the advisory class, he could, and he would arrange for Alicia to be tutored in math. That concluded the discipline counseling session. Later in the day, the counselor told me that Alicia told him that she not only liked me, but far more importantly, that she had changed her attitude. In summary, the session was totally non-coercive, Nothing was imposed. The session was collaborative. I worked with the errant student, sharing and asking rather than telling. 
Finally, the student left with a specific procedure to control future impulses. So here is a tip. By inquiring, by having the student reflect on her behavior, and by sharing a specific procedure that she could be used in the future, this adolescent left the counseling session with the motivation to become more responsible. By the way, the impulse cards and posters are available at the shop at withoutstress.com where you can check out more stress reducing ideas. Thanks for watching, sharing, and have a stress free week. Thank you.